In today's news, Thailand's public health ministry gives its proposed cutoff date for travelers that were approved for the Thailand Pass, although no official decision has been announced yet. And with the suspension of test and go, are we bidding an early farewell to the high season? All this is coming up in today's program. You're watching Thailand News Today, bringing you the latest headlines in Thailand and beyond. So, this is the latest on the cutoff date for travelers with approved Thailand passes. Again, this is just the latest words from Thailand's public health minister, Anutin Chan Virakun, on this matter. A final decision will be made tomorrow at the CCSA meeting. Now, the minister is proposing the cutoff date for those traveling under the Test and Go scheme be set to January 15th. The government had previously discussed setting January 10th as the last day for approved travelers to enter under the quarantine exemption program, but no date has been confirmed at this time. The CCSA will discuss the suspension of the test and go quarantine exemption scheme at its general meeting tomorrow, which will be chaired by Prime Minister Prayutan Ocha. So hopefully they'll also clarify the matter of the cutoff date. Thailand's high season looks to be over already, with tourism operators reporting a surge in cancellations and plummeting hotel occupancy. The development follows the government's decision to suspend the test and go entry scheme amidst concerns about the Omicron variant, which is rapidly spreading around the world. Tourism operators have been reporting a rise in cancellations as a result of the decision. Pongsakon Gate Prapakon from the Tourism Council of Panga says that around 60% of the province's January bookings have been cancelled and that hotel losses have already run more than 100 million baht as a result. He says it's vital the sandbox scheme, which is currently limited to only Phuket, be extended to other tourist provinces. In Grabi, Sharin Tipti Yapon from the Provincial Tourism Council says bookings have plummeted as well as a result of the suspension and average occupancy at Grabi hotels now hovers at just 20%. She fears more cancellations will follow if the province is not allowed to resume operating its sandbox scheme. While occupancy for February and March is currently between 35 and 40 percent, Sharin Tip says there may be no more new bookings in the next two months if test and go does not resume. Meanwhile, in the east of the country, Pisut Sakhu from the Thai Hotels Association says tourists should still be allowed to pre-register under the test and go system and obtain their Thailand pass for a future date, even if they can't currently enter under the scheme at the moment. She says this would at least allow people to book future trips and arrive when the COVID situation is under control. The public health ministry has raised the country's COVID alert level from 3 to 4, with level 5 having the most stringent measures. The level 4 measures include asking residents to avoid dining and drinking at restaurants, visiting, quote, risky venues, and traveling, especially on public transportation. The ministry is encouraging people to work from home and added that some businesses and venues that have a high risk of COVID-19 transmission may need to be closed. The Thai government says it fears a surge of tens of thousands of new COVID infections and officials are considering a resumption of measures like a ban on alcohol in restaurants and limiting large gatherings yet again. Yesterday, Thailand reported 3,899 new cases, with data showing Omicron infections having tripled compared to last month's figures. Sumani Washaratsin from the CCSA says the government will make a decision on new restrictions at a meeting tomorrow. Officials are also expected to discuss the suspension of the test and go entry scheme, which had allowed vaccinated travelers from approved countries to enter Thailand with minimal quarantine. The governor of Phuket has reassured local businesses that the island remains open for tourists under its sandbox scheme. Narong Wun Siu says despite a steep rise in case numbers, there are no plans for a lockdown. He says he has received pleas not to shut down the island as to do so would inevitably affect the province's economy yet again. Over 10,000 foreign visitors arrived on Phuket between Saturday and Monday, 
up from an average of 500 a day in the early stages of the sandbox. Narong says these numbers have provided some respite for local businesses. Meanwhile, Deputy Provincial Governor Pichet Banaphong says officials are testing upwards of 5,000 tourists a day, and for this reason, it contributes to the sharp rise in infections reported on the island. Phuket reported 227 new infections yesterday, the highest daily number in a month. The governor says most were foreign tourists arriving through the sandbox scheme, and the majority only had mild symptoms. Provincial officials are now working with hotels to prepare 1,000 beds to serve as hospital isolation facilities. These will be used for asymptomatic patients or those with only mild or moderate symptoms to ease the pressure on hospital beds and allow those who are not seriously ill to self-isolate at a hotel. Likewise, in Pattaya, officials are planning to open up more hospitals and are reviewing measures for home isolation for those who are asymptomatic or have mild symptoms. In Chonburi today, health officials report nearly 800 cases, with more than 4,000 patients currently being treated at local hospitals. Pattaya used to have more than 1,600 beds available at hospitals, but many hotels stopped offering isolation stays due to a low budget from the National Health Security Office. In a meeting on Tuesday, Pattaya officials decided to offer around 300 beds for hotel isolation. The beds will be available within a week, and patients who are interested in getting treatment will have to pay 500 baht per night. For patients with severe cases or those requiring urgent attention, Pattaya is preparing 200 hospital beds at Dularat 3 Hospital. A House Secretariat investigation says it found no evidence that Prime Minister Prayutan Osha paid MPs to vote for him. Wisan Teesha Tiwarat, a Puatai MP for Chiang Rai, had accused the Prime Minister of paying 5 million baht to a number of MPs in return for votes of support. He made the allegation during a no-confidence debate back in September. The claim then prompted House Speaker Chuan Li Pai to order an investigation into the matter. The probe has now ended, with one of Chuan's advisors saying there is no evidence to back up Wisan's allegation. As part of the process, an investigating committee interviewed Wisan and a number of others, as well as examining documentation relating to visits to Parliament made by the Prime Minister and his aides. However, the committee eventually ruled that there was no evidence to back up the allegations. However, the Prime Minister is still coming under pressure from opposition parties, with Song Kit Kong also from the Puatai Party and an MP for the northeastern province of Ubon Rajthani, saying the opposition will ask for a general debate this month in order to quiz the government on its handling of national affairs. Opposition MPs will also call for a censure debate at the next House session. One of the main matters up for discussion is just how long the Prime Minister has left in power. Song Kid says his party will ask the Constitutional Court to decide once and for all when the Prime Minister's maximum term of eight years comes to an end. The opposition parties believe it will be all over on August the 24th because Prayut came to power in the 2014 military coup when he was head of the now-defunct National Council for Peace and Order. However, supporters of the Prime Minister dispute this, insisting his term did not technically begin until June the 9th of 2019 when it was royally endorsed under the 2017 Constitution. If this is the case, the Prime Minister would be entitled to remain in power until, wait for it, 2027. And while the government frets over the Omicron variant, 333 people have died in road traffic accidents during Thailand's so-called seven dangerous days in the end-of-year holiday. The official figures reported by Nation Thailand were released by the Department of Disaster Prevention and Mitigation. The department says there were over 2,700 road traffic accidents reported between December the 29th and January the 4th, with over 2,670 people injured and 333 killed. On Tuesday, the last of the seven days, there were 209 road accidents, resulting in 21 deaths and 202 injuries. On the same day, over 78,000 cars and motorcycles were charged with violating traffic laws. Of these, 23,000 were not wearing a helmet, while another 20,000 were driving without a license. 
The northern province of Chiang Mai reported the most accidents at 96, while Bangkok had the highest death toll at 22 fatalities. According to that same Nation Thailand report, speeding has been identified as the cause of over a third of accidents. Over 82% of accidents involved motorbikes, and the majority happened between the hours of 6 and 7 p.m. Despite the shocking statistics, the DDPM says accident fatalities over the seven-day period was actually 18% lower than the period last year. Thailand had the dubious honor of recording one of the highest road death tolls in the world in 2016 at 32.7 people out of every 100,000. The DDPM says it aims to reduce that to 12 people per 100,000 by 2027. And that concludes our report. Thailand News Today will be back tomorrow. Meanwhile, you're now up to date on The Tiger.